Today, we are going to visit the recently excavated site of what is believed to be the Cana of Galilee, the ancient town where Jesus turned water into wine. I just imagine a wedding here, and you got six stone jars filled with water, and you just turn them into wine. Even though there's a modern town by the name of Cana, and we have already made an episode about it, we found out that this town was identified as the Biblical Cana only in the middle of the 17th century. And some historians believe that this modern town was chosen because it had a good road that provided easy access to the visiting pilgrims. So the Cana that we all know and have been visiting for years might not even be the Cana recorded in the Bible. And if this isn't the right place, then where is the original Cana of Galilee? Apparently, there are five proposed locations for being the true Cana. The first one is what we all thought was the real place, this modern town. The second and the third places are not that far off in the outskirts of the town. The fourth proposed location is a very interesting site located just a few miles north. And the last location, believe it or not, is all the way up in Lebanon. And even though each location has intriguing evidence, after days of research, Rhoda and I got interested in Kirbat Cana, the site located just a few miles north of Nazareth. What drew our attention here is the recent archaeological discoveries of a mysterious cave where they found Greek inscription that says Lord Jesus. And in the same cave they found Maltese crosses and even what seems to be a prayer altar upon which they found two stone jars with spaces for four more that would have sat there to commemorate the miracle. If this is the actual location and all evidence points that this is, then we can just imagine what this place looked like when Jesus turned water into wine. Babe? Yeah. Oh my gosh, there's a huge snake skin. No way. So today, we attempt to drive to this uninhabited location, explore the site, and visit the very cave which is believed to have served as a memorial to the first recorded miracle of Jesus. So we're heading to Kirbat Cana, which is the location that's supposed to be the real site of Cana of Galilee, where Jesus turned water into wine. And the location is actually off main roads. And online I read that you can get to it with an SUV through a dirt road. If you get to Yotfat, then you have to drive like a two mile dirt road to get to Kirbat Cana. There's no access to it from a main road. It's kind of hard to get, you need to hike there or drive through the dirt road. So we're gonna try to do that. Kirbat Cana is located about seven miles north of Nazareth. And there are no paved roads that lead up to the site. But we've read online that we can get to it from the west side via an unmarked dirt road. Oh my. Wow. I don't know, they said that an SUV would be able to go through here. What do you think? Oh, I don't think we can go there, but... This might need a Jeep, not an SUV. Oi! Come, come. Whoa! Look at this, it looks like a riverbed. I'm gonna walk there and see. So? So, it's not, it's no way we're gonna make it with an SUV. There is a large four and four car that is having difficulty to make it through the road down. Let's go really steep down and the rocks get bigger and bigger. Yeah. So we're gonna try to find another way there. Okay. We saw on the map, on a satellite picture, that there is a road from up north. We're gonna try that one. It looks like it could get us really close to the very site and then we're not in danger of rain. Even if it rains, we can just go back and hide in the car. So we're gonna give it a try. It's still a risk, but... Let's do it. So, it looks like this is the entrance. This is very interesting. Uh, I'm gonna follow this. Guys, they look like they're doing much better. So far, this road looks a bit better than the other roads. 
so we'll see. We got a few obstacles on the way. One is there's no rail on the side, so you just can fly off the mountain. Two, a little drizzle, which hopefully will stop, but we'll keep on going and see how far we can uh, get with this road. The North Axis Road did not have good driving conditions either, as it started getting too rocky and muddy for our car to handle. So after thinking for a while, we've decided that the best way to get there is to simply park the car at the southeast side and just hike it up. So we tried to take the dirt road from Kirbat Kena, but it's not gonna work. Uh, we're gonna drive around the mountain and try to make it through the other side of Kirbat Kena. There's another dirt road that I haven't read about online, but looking at the satellite maps, I saw it. And I think we could make it there through the main road from the other side, from the south side of Kirbat Kena mountain. So it looks like this is a much better road. That road was terrible, so uh, this looks like a much better option. So this is it, I think. Uh, we're just gonna park here, because we can't drive up. We can't find our way around, and we're just gonna hike up. We got to the closest point possible to Kirbat Kena, which is right up the hill. We're gonna hike up, let's go. Yeah. It just rained on me. Um, it started raining. It's raining. The clouds don't look too good and it just rained on us. Yeah. So. <sighs> After three hours of driving on the East, rocks. East, west, north. <laughs> and now it rains. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so all this rain, it's too much risk. Even a little drizzle is too much risk. If it starts pouring, we don't want to ruin our camera and equipment. We got to pack and go. So we're ready now to go to the place. It's middle of July now. It shouldn't be mud anymore. I think we're ready to give it another attempt and try to make it up that hill and look at the ancient caves. Ready? Let's go. Let's go. much much better than last time isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's not wet. Yeah everything's dried up and it's kind of not as green as it used to be but it's still beautiful. Look at it, it's middle of July and there's still green grass. Yeah. Are you seeing this? Because look at the soil it's so good. I think wow. this is that for farming. I mean we just park right here. Just park right here. Yep. I'm gonna just go up a bit and reverse into it okay? Yep perfect. here it's where all set and uh, it's a great place to start because where we're going is right up the hill towards Akina
Last time we were here, the danger was the mud. But this time it's middle of July and we've got snakes here and ticks. So we gotta constantly check in ourselves. We got long uh, sleeves just in case once we get up and also long pants. Look at that, what is this? That's uh, just a fly. Maybe you could see Nazareth from here. Yeah. Wow, because that's cool. this is that valley and your parents live at the edge of it. Wow, that is so cool because that's Nazareth. If you were to walk by foot, I mean, that's not that long. You see it. Yeah, that's crazy. Do we go up this way or that way? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, there's a path there. We can just keep going up. Let's do it. The thorns are absolutely unbearable. I mean, it feels like somebody is cutting us with a knife. Yeah, just crashing. Oh my goodness, oh, it's so painful. Do you know how we tell visitors if you can come and make it, come and see it for yourself? Do you know how we do that? Yeah. Don't come here. I've kind of lost the trail though. Oh, I'm so tired. Oh man, we're finally here. We made it. Uh, there it is. I can see something there. There, look at that. What is this? Is that a cave? I actually see stairs, like steps. Actual steps that lead down. I mean, this is definitely a place people lived in or, or did something. Take a look at the bottom, you see the steps? Like, yeah, uh, there's a step. Ooh, hey, it goes deeper. It goes deep, yeah. A few years ago, Dr. Thomas McCullough and his team conducted an archaeological dig in this area. And at the end of their first excavation season, they accidentally discovered a mysterious cave. In this cave, they found multiple important artifacts buried inside, such as a Greek graffiti that reads Kyrie Yesu. Translated, it means Lord Jesus. They also found a prayer altar with Maltese crosses carved on it. But more significantly, they found broken remains of two stone jars with spaces for four more. These artifacts date as far back as the 5th century, which means that even though they don't go as far back as the time of Jesus, they still suggest that this location was chosen by the Byzantine believers in the 5th century to serve as the commemorative spot where Jesus turned water into wine. So we're seeing a cave right here. Let's go and examine if this is the one. It looks just like the pictures we saw online. So putting a long sleeve shirt because, I mean, you don't know what's in the cave. There's a snake or some kind of spider or a centipede. And I'm gonna even keep my neck covered. Now yeah, let's go see. Gosh. Yep. Boy, there's a yellow jacket. Yo. Yo. So, what do you see? Wow. All right, it's not that deep. And there's the end of it. And it's not the place we're looking for. Okay, so this was probably just a living place. Living place, and there are the steps that I found. We saw before here. Right, I'm coming out. Careful, careful. There's a yellow jacket right at the door. Uh, yeah. All right, so it looks like that's not the cave that we're looking for. And uh, we need to keep on looking for it. Everything is overgrown and it's hard to find that specific cave, but we gotta find it before it gets dark. We gotta keep going up, I think, right? Yeah, let's keep going up. I came from the mud, there's dirt on my hands. Strong like a tree. Look at the pottery shards, and some of them have lines. Look how big. While climbing to the top of the hill, we realize how big this town must have been as we keep finding pottery, water cisterns, and many ruins that have been laying here untouched for centuries. Ooh, wow! Look at that pottery, it has circles on it. You can see the circles and the drawings on the pottery. We have never found anything this size in any of the sites. 
This place is just a treasure chest of, of archaeology. It looks like a mikveh. Like a ceremonial bath. Look, you got stairs and it's plastered and you got stairs up. During Byzantine period, once it became a Christian place, this could have been yeah, a baptismal place. Yeah. But wait, if it's a mikveh, then the synagogue has to be here. Yeah, maybe this was a synagogue. So I think, at least, it looks like one. Besides the abundance of archaeological evidence on site, this location has also a strong historical link for being the true Cana, as the early maps consistently locate Cana to be north of Sepphoris. And it wasn't until the mid-17th century that this designation was changed, and the modern town of Cana was chosen instead because of its easy access. But the pilgrims of old came here, to this ground. So could it be that this is the biblical Cana? The one mentioned in the Bible, the one where the wedding was held. If so, this would explain why centuries later the Byzantine believers made the veneration cave to commemorate the first recorded miracle of Jesus. Whoa. Yeah, I see it. You see it? Yeah, I think that's it. There it is. He found Whoa! It. There it is. Hold on, I'm coming. This, this is it. You found it. Wow, this is it. Okay, let me put a long uh, shirt on and I'm going in. Okay, all right. All right, I'm going in. Be careful, okay? Yeah, I've got the neck cover and everything. Yeah. Okay. okay. Be careful not to fall because this has filled in, but you don't know if it's filled in well. Yeah. What do you see through the hole? Oh my, it kind of collapsed. Oh no. Yeah. The shape of it? It goes in. It goes in, but it collapsed. I was hoping we will be able to see the crosses and everything they said they found. Yeah. Do you see? That's not it. That's not it? No, this is not it. There's nothing in here. Oh, man. It's a bit disappointing because we really hope to see the, the, the altar with the cross, but... Uh, what a bummer. A bit sad that we couldn't go down and see the actual altar with the cross from 5th century. The encouraging part is that we are in ancient synagogue. This is a 1st century synagogue and then later converted into a church. There is a baptismal place right there and a mikveh probably in the 1st century. And we can just imagine what this place looked like when Jesus turned water into wine. Even though this cave is a very interesting one, especially that it is located at what is believed to have been a synagogue at the time of Jesus, unfortunately, this is not the cave we were looking for. So after coming home, we made a few phone calls and we were able to reach Dr. Mordecai Aviam, who knows this area very well as he was involved in excavations of this site. Wonderful. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Uh, okay, so I've got awesome news. Uh, Professor Aviam said that he's digging somewhere not too far from here in near Mount Tabor. Okay. And uh, he said that if we bring to him the drone footages and the maps, he'll be able to pinpoint the location of the cave. That's awesome. Yes, so this is our chance. Uh, totally yeah, let's go. These are times when we, by law, must wear masks. And Rod and I forgot our masks, so we've made uh, from uh, paper towels. All right, so we're uh, gonna look for Dr. Aviam. Um, so you were involved in the excavations with Dr. Makalo at the Kirbat Kena? Yes, I was involved since the uh, beginning of the excavations. I was not digging there. If I show you the, like we have drone footage and also the map, would you be able to pinpoint where it's at, yes, where the cave is? Of course. Okay. It, so is, it, is lo it is located on the slope towards the south. And when they finished excavating it, they, they closed with a metal grill. Metal grill. Yeah. Professor Aviam remembered that metal bars were placed to block the entry to the cave. And he also mentioned that this cave was right under a fig tree. And by now the fig tree would have grown so big that it would be impossible to enter the cave. There was a big tree growing over the entrance, so maybe it will be impossible to find it today. Uh, wow. But I can show you where it was. 
But despite all the potential obstacles we might find there, Professor Aviam still showed us the exact area where we should find the cave. Thank you so much again. Pleasure. Uh, wow. Well, okay. Thanks so much for your time. All the best. So what do you think? Are we, are we gonna go for a third time? I don't know. He said they had to cut the fig trees to even get there. Get there yeah. So even if we attempt to go, probably not gonna see it, not gonna find it. So uh, I don't know, are we gonna go? I don't know. They say third time was a charm. This is really exciting. I think we're actually gonna find it this time. Are you excited? There's a few things to be said about this hike. First of all, don't do it. It's thorny, it's dangerous. And if you don't listen to my advice and you do do it, make sure you don't do it at noon, right? No, just don't do it at all, at all. Almost there. So, Professor Aviam told us to look for a fig tree. And uh, on the satellite imagery, he showed us that he saw two fig trees that could potentially be the sites where the cave was discovered. There's one that has a fig tree coming out of it. Yeah, that looks like it. Let's check it out. This is it. This is it? I think it has those metal bars. Metal. This could be it. I mean, it does look a lot like it. The only thing is, I see a little hole under the rocks, but not much. I didn't see like a good entrance that we would have seen in the picture. There is one more tree that he told us to check out, which could be the spot. Let's go take a look at that. Okay. Well, Rhoda's checking out that tree. I'm gonna check that other fig tree, just a little higher here over the step. Did you find anything down there? No, nothing. Okay, the spot you checked out is not it. Maybe it's this one. Babe? Yeah. Oh my gosh, there's a huge snake skin. No way. Wait, what? What did you find? What did you find? Snake skin. Huge one. Right here. I'm just terrified to be between these rocks because snakes can hide here. I'll come down to you. these rocks that just flip over when I stepped on it and I just went this was under my face right here oh the camera is broken I'm okay praise the Lord I'm okay praise the Lord it's just the camera praise the Lord I'm Somehow I fell and didn't break anything on my body. I, I don't know how. Despite the bruises, Sergio still decided to examine the rest of the fig trees on the property and to try to find the cave. So it does look like there is a, uh, a cave inside, but it's overgrown. It, this could be it, but there's no way we're going in. Yeah, in this condition, it's really hard to find. With all this growth, you wouldn't be able to see these stuff. Yeah. This could be it as well. Man, it's all overgrown. That's it. Back to the car. Thank you, Lord, for the protection. We're done with this place. Let's go home. 
even though we didn't get to see the inside of the pilgrim's cave due to the overgrowth and the collapsed rocks, we still got to see this place, a place which is the best candidate for the biblical Cana, and we got to see it in its untouched form, so that we can now mentally picture what it would have looked like as we read the account of the miracle. Jesus would have been down there, right? Yeah. Wow, can you believe the view they had here? That is so beautiful. I just imagine a wedding here, and you got six stone jars filled with water, and you just turn them into wine. And Nazareth is right there. The man of Jonah is right there. Like wow. all these places that we pass by. Wow. And the valley is just gorgeous. Incredible. The greatest takeaway from this adventure was being reminded of how fragile our lives are. We were reminded to cherish every moment we have with our loved ones, because we don't even know if we'll get to see them tomorrow. I could never let you go You are the current, the river and the undertow And the greatest comfort we have is to know that even when that day comes, when we must retire our bodies, we will be welcomed by our Lord Jesus. The Lord who turned water into wine, of whom the prophets of the Bible wrote about. The Lord who shed His blood on the cross for all humanity, so that those who believe can have an everlasting life. Hi everyone, wow, thank you so much for watching. We just, uh, we're so thankful that we get to spend another day with each other and um, we're thankful that we get the privilege to share this adventure with you. We hope that it was a blessing to you and that you have enjoyed it and we hope to see you next time. Yes, so again, thank you for watching and the best is yet to come.